Hi everyone and welcome to Let's Get Visible, a podcast for small business owners helping them to grow, have a sustainable business and get more visibility online. I'm Dawes Brown and I'll be bringing you SEO and digital marketing tips as well as interviews and conversations with other small business owners. So let's get started. Today, I'm joined by Anna Shepherd. Anna is the founder and CEO of Bambuda Group, an all-inclusive peer-to-peer leadership development network. Anna has added value to hundreds of companies and inspirational leaders by showing them how to work kinder. The founder of several other major initiatives, including the Corporate's Kindness Project, which is an Australian-based research study focusing on the business benefits of working kind, the first white paper, which was released in 2019 and is now a podcast show called Project Boss, which is launching soon. The Game Changers Gathering is an annual event founded by Bambuda Group, which brings together thought leaders and social impact experts dedicated to creating change. Bambuda Group hosts sustainable leadership keynote events every two months and provides coaching and training built to encourage members to collaborate, educate, evaluate and celebrate sustainable development. So, without further ado, welcome to the Let's Get Visible podcast, Anna. Yay! Hi, girls. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for making time to be part of the podcast today. I really appreciate you coming on board um, because we connected via a Bambuda, a group event back in early 2019, so just over a year ago. And since then, we've had the opportunity to collaborate together and work together in lots of different ways Um, and this is something that has made such an impact and change I know for myself both personally and in business and just your energy and presence always lifts me up Um, and just having that like-minded person within my network has been so important. So firstly thank you because and I've mentioned this to you as well but Yeah, from that meeting and from going to that event, so many other wonderful things just naturally and organically happened and Mm. came into my world. And I really, really believe and feel that it was from that one, you know, that one time, that one event and lots of different seeds, um, you know, were sown and, and grown from that time. So in the introduction, I mentioned that you're the founder of Bambuda Group and you're based in Sydney. Um, But what I'd really love to share with everyone is the reason why you decided to launch Bambuda Group. Yeah, and and, well, first of all, thank you. That was a hell of an introduction. And (laughs) um, I think I can safely say the same for you, Dawes. You are an incredibly kind, you know, dedicated businesswoman. And you, um, you know, you've contributed so much to the community over this time as well. And um, especially very recently where you were facilitating some of the online cuddle groups that we put in place as part of our COVID-19 response to support the community. So, you know, it, 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 the community is becoming something that's much more than what a founder creates. It's a community that people contribute to. And like you said, you've come along and you've lent into, you know, the good vibes and you've lent into the positive ripple effects that can occur but they don't just happen overnight it's a, it's a result of working hard and working kind yep. so you know a real nice example is the 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 positive effects of coming along getting involved hasn't haven't just happened you've actually lent into those so well done you and um it's Thanks, really nice Sammy. to see your <laughs> branding your profile going from strength to strength and uh you know we're, we're big fans here at bambooja and we'll, we'll always be so um Thank you. You know, with, with starting up a business or founding any kind of business, it's hard work. I think the first thing you've got to say is, yeah. like, you know, I hate listening to these things where you come out and everybody's giving the the cherry the cherry on the cake scenario of, of how perfect everything is. It is really, really hard work. And, um, you know, understanding and learning at 100 miles an hour um, at the speed you need to learn while sifting out the noise from the actual, you know, gold nuggets that are going to give you the support you need is, is one of the biggest challenges. And, you know, the reality of it is that's why we set Bambuda up. 
is to support business leaders in a caring environment to create that peer-to-peer network and support that can be trusted in a way where it isn't just about referrals and you take a chunk, we take a chunk, this, that, and the other. It's actually about, well, how can we become the best humans on this journey rather than just burn out within a couple of years of starting? And we really see, think, well, in these times when you do make a shift, whether it's something's happened in your life that's made you make a shift or uh, you know, you've just got to a point where you're ready to take the deep dive. These are times in your life where there's a change happening within you and around you. And we want to make sure that those leaders that do engage with us through our network, through our groups, through our activities, aren't going down the path that's going to lead them to, you know, maybe not being that ethical in business, making the decisions like, oh, you know, you've got to put your own life jacket on when you're starting up, or you might be a big corporation in a corporation a leader in a corporation and you're tired you don't have enough to give and there's always this deficit going on yes Um, and it just feels like it's forever this deficit and actually there doesn't need to be and this is what this is what the whole gig is about is we noticed that through the research that we're doing that there's a lot out there to help people understand how they're doing. So we, you could give you an assessment tool like a B Corp or you could go through one of the other things and see how ethical you are as a business. But there wasn't a lot out there to actually support the leaders who were implementing this change on the journey um, in a way which isn't like it's the end of day's party. We don't. No one wants to go to the party that's all about the world is ending and no. we don't. Nobody, we've had enough of that this year. Like, yeah, we and have. this is really real. Like, people are fatigued. Yeah. They're tired. We need some something that's going to make people feel positive and excited and uplifted again. Um, and that's what we try to do at Bambuda Group: is create a safe place for people to genuinely and authentically be themselves, with proven strategies um, around that peer-to-peer coaching and the benefits that they can, that can have. You know, and all the other good stuff that we do is is really about helping people connect with themselves and others and connection being a really important part of successful leadership and impactful businesses is those that understand themselves and the sphere of influence around them and do right by themselves and the sphere of influence around them are the ones that, that succeed. Yeah, absolutely. And it's about sustainability too. And you touched on this before. You launch a business, you're running a million miles an hour, and then within 12 months to two years, you just feel like you're going to completely collapse because you're trying to learn everything. You're trying to do all the things. And there's only, you know, one of you, but it takes, it does take an army to make a business, you know, rock and roll. It really isn't just a solo journey. It takes lots and lots of different people, you know, to get you there. Um, but in the first event that I attended back in 2019, I think it was in April, one thing that I guess really resonated with me was your background and your story um, and the, you know, journey that you had growing up. So do you mind sharing that? Um, with our audience as well, because I think that'll connect a few more dots um, for people. Yeah, and I think with regards to that kindness agenda and the reason we're focusing on kindness is so we can simplify things into a really digestible human emotion, you know, or, you know, an action. Um, but my life has been scattered with unpredictable elements of kindness, which have again and again and again changed the trajectory of my life. So I grew up in caravans on the northeast coast of England I've got a bit of a Game of Thrones accent, so some people, <laughs> some people enjoy that. Some people might need to put some translation on there for people, those. Um, and I've got a, a few sisters, and, and several of those have got disabilities. And, you know, we kind of grew up on the outskirts of community, and we never really fit in, and it was very much around that not being included. And, um, you know, school was pretty tough. Like, uh, we went to school on a council estate, um, and it was it was a case of if your face fits you in and if you don't wear the right clothes, you know, if you don't do this or that, you, you're going to get bullied. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. So we just, it wasn't easy. Um, you know, it was so bad, the bullying at one point that my my dad used to have to drive, like, park, like, miles away from the school. So we'd all have to scuttle out and go and, like, pretend we were walking home. But, you know, he'd bought this larder, which was apparently a really ugly car. I think mm. it's, like... I was talking to another one of our members, Oksana. I think a lad is a Russian 
Russian uh-huh. brand. Yeah, um, but I thought it was actually quite a nice car. So anyway, there was a lot of bullying and, um, you know, things got a bit challenging in the teenage years in that little caravan. It was a bit of a pressure cooker environment. And I ended up, um, you know, not really having a place to call my own anymore. And I was sleeping in the car for a while. Um, I was also went into the care system for a short period of time before I went into like um, council supported housing. Um, but I had these moments throughout my career where somebody would give me a, just give me a break. Somebody would give me a chance. And again, it was about working hard and me putting myself forward for these opportunities. You know, the first guy who'd give me a job in a pizza shop when I was 16, it'd give me enough money to get by. And, you know, now I'm still weaning myself off the chips, to be honest, <laughs> like the hot chips. Anyone from Scarborough just loves hot chips. Like anyone from Scarborough. If you go to Scarborough, at some point in the conversation, someone will say to you, do you want some chips then? Chips. <laughs> like, that's how we socialise. Do you want some chips? And they're treating you. They're like, do you want some of the best of what we've got to offer here? Some hot that's chips. That's amazing. And we have vinegar on them, not lemon. So just saying. Um, so, so, you know, went, went to drama school because that caravan pack I grew up on, it wasn't like a traditional traveller caravan pack. It was a tourist, a holiday park. Mm. So, you know, there was there was entertainment coming in, different types of Sherman, like performer Sherman, circus Sherman, fairground Sherman, every day. Um, that you know, I could juggle by the time I was six. I could unicycle by the time I was eight. <laughs> you know, like it was it was all these things I was learning just like by That's being awesome. in the right place at the right time. I can't unicycle now, God knows. <laughs> But I'm, I'm lucky if I can, you know, get a full workout out of it these days. Um, so, so you know, went went to the drama school, um, managed to managed to pass the course there. Um, ended up going to work in Spain and ended up as an entertainer for a little while because they used to used to sing and dance and hold a tune. That's what I could do. Now it's more like just a little sing song in the shower or. I think I can speak fluent Spanish after a couple of glasses of wine. No, nobody else agrees, does. But that's that's basically uh, the basically situation. So, so you know, went to university and I kind of applied for university because, in all honesty, I didn't really know what else to do. I didn't yeah. have a place that I called home. I was just a bit a bit going from place to place and. When I got into university, I really didn't know how to do uni. I arrived. I had a pair of thongs. I didn't own any shoes because I've been living in Spain. I had a little suitcase with my stuff in it. My hair was braided. I looked like a right plonker, to be honest. <laughs> like, my hair in braids. Like, I just had braids with, you know, those little plastic things hanging off, like Monica <laughs> out of Friends. Like, just looked like a total idiot. But I thought I looked Ooh. cool oh, as, yeah. right? So I rock up to uni and then... And with all of these like kids that have done well in life so far, and I'm just looking at them like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to fit in here. Um, so anyway, I, I started the course, and it was a HND course, which was like a, a kind of entry level course that, that you didn't get onto the degree. You kind right. of were just under the degree. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, there wasn't a much applying themselves on this course. It was a little bit of a dos house. People would show up if you were lucky. If they did, they were probably stunned. Like it was, it was too much. Yeah. Um, and I remember one of my first essays I handed in. Um, my teacher was just like, "What is this?" And I'm <laughs> my, in my head, I, I put my heart and soul into it. Yeah, you did a great thought, job. <laughs> I did, and I thought it was the best essay anyone had ever written in in the lives. And I handed it in. And then um, she pulled me in and she was just like, this isn't good enough. There's no structure here. I like your ideas, but you just, how, how I just, this is a fail. So, and I was like, well, I don't know how to write an essay. And she was just like, what? How have you got to university without knowing how to write an essay? And this is one of the kind of real times I really, really started to understand how disruptive dyslexia is in your life when you're trying to succeed. And, I'd never really been put myself in the dyslexic category because I'd always just subconsciously gone around everything in another way. You know, I'd be like, yeah. well, I don't enjoy that and I'm not very good at that. So I'll try and go around. So I used to hand my work in at, at college on a video diary and they just accepted it. And it'd just be me going, hi, this is what I've learned from this. <laughs> and this is what I've learned from that. Anyway, 
So I didn't really realise at that time how inclusive they were being about the fact that I didn't even quite realise I had dyslexia until, until we progressed into uni. Yeah. So anyway, I said to her, can you just teach me how to do it? So she was really lovely, this lady, which was a bit irritated at the time, to be fair, um, <laughs> called, called Helen, but she turned out to be a really nice lady. And she, um, she was like, right, I'll teach you the structure. And I was like, can I have another chance? So she, she was like, right, she needs to go speak to the powers that be. But she said, I can have another chance. And I did. And I got a distinction. Oh, my I handed goodness. It, yes. So I just needed to learn the structure my whole life. So we made assumptions about people's intelligence based on whether yes. they've learned the system or not. Yes. And I think that was a really nice example of, you know, you can't assume that no. people know your system. And that actually, if you can, if you can show them the system, it doesn't matter where they've come from. They they could potentially apply themselves perfectly well. Um, so that was just one example. And you know, I went off, finished uni. I was the LGBT officer at uni for a number of years, where mm-hmm. it was great actually. Um, they just give you they give you like a title. You're like the officer of the LGBT <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah, officer. yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, um, you know, in the gay bars, I'm like, hi, I'm the uh, LGBT <laughs> officer. <laughs> so, you know, um, Love it. they did, obviously thought I was a bit of a plonker as well. So, um, but when I got to that uni, there was like, there was no, not many gay people at all. And I was like, I was gay. Yeah. Well, I wasn't even gay. I was like in and out of the closet more than yes. the kids from the line, the witch in the wardrobe. Um, I was like gay, straight, bisexual, don't know. And now I think the term, God knows what the term is. I just, other people need to put me in boxes and I'll, I allow them to yeah. these days. Yeah. Cause it makes them feel better. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, you know, when I got there, there was no gay people really. And, and there was half sports students and, and half performing arts students. And by the time I finished uni, it was just the most amount of gay people per capita in a town wow. in the UK. Because it was obviously... People were all coming out at that age and realizing who they were. Yeah. So that was quite interesting. And then um, when I finished university, I became the student president um, by accident because nobody else ran for it. Again, yeah. just in the right time at the right place. And we say working hard and working kind, but sometimes it's just about being at the right time and grasping the opportunities that come your Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Um, so we did something cool, though. We went to Africa and we worked in Malawi, renovating schools with a project that's still established now called Inspire Malawi, run by a lady called Michelle Rowe. And that was when, you know, until that time, I'd kind of uh, seen myself as a bit of a victim. Like, the world has happened to me. You know, I was thrown out. Like, nobody's, everyone's always picked on us. I'm, you know, a minority. People don't understand me because I'm gay, this, that, and the other. But once I'd been to Malawi and met the most resourceful, happy, awesome people that yeah. lived there, um, I really realised that actually I hadn't had it that bad because I'd always, because of where I was born, I had access to education, I had access to, you know, medical cover, and I could still, even though I'd gone on this weird trajectory, get into education. Yeah. Well, these kids will never, some of those kids will never be able to access education. They're never going to be able to, to be anything but a wife because that's what they've been predetermined to be. Or, yeah. Um, you know, so I came back kind of um, quite inspired by the people that I'd, meet, I'd met. Um, I really struggled with anxiety a lot in those days as well. So actually the challenge of going to um, Africa and being in this environment that was so alien to me really challenged me and pushed me through some thresholds too. Yeah. Um, and I came back just quite determined that, um, I, that the world is just ridiculous, the inequality in it. Like it, that we don't need to be in this environment. We don't need to operate in the way that we do with this inequality, and it, it's holding everybody back. Um, so I worked for lots of charities in like fundraising and marketing kind of roles, and got quite senior in some of these charities. I uh, worked for a hospice in the UK and a palliative care. I worked for um, conservation charities, children's illness charities like Ronald McDonald House and Camp Quality, and. A, you know, the next step was, well, am I going to become a CEO of a charity? Um, 
I did do a random stint for a few years as well in the private sector at Hard Rock Cafe, heading up the... Ah, yeah, Sydney. Yeah, yeah. Sydney. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was a bit of a visa-visa situation, but I did did put together the philanthropy strategy and the music strategy there. And, and then and music has always been a theme throughout my life as well, as in, you know, it, it's just nothing can change your mood like a good song. Oh, my Goodness, yes. Just had a best. conversation. You having a bad day? Put a good yep, song, put a song on. on. You want to have a good cry? Put a sad put song, song on. on, isn't it? Yeah. And we were speaking about the fact that you know meditation and affirmations, and I get all that, and I've I've experienced those different things too, and they do absolutely help. But nothing helps me more than music therapy, and that's what I call it. You know, that is, as you said, does not matter what mood you're in, you're able to just shift, you know, out of it by putting that song on or you just need to be in that moment. You just need to feel whatever emotion it is that you're feeling at the time. For me, it's definitely the song. Like I'm, you know, def- always got my phone on with Spotify going or, you know, something going in the background, a CD even showing my age. Um, but agree. It's definitely a record. A record. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my first was actually a record, but only because I had like really old parents. It wasn't because yeah. I'm old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's really true, Dawes, and the, and the importance of connection. And I think that one of the challenges, because we're doing loads of research at the moment, and we're just about to launch the Leadership Lab, where we're going to be continuing on that research around kindness in leadership and the benefits of that. But what does that actually mean? And yes. how do people be in touch with themselves? Because we can look at it from an emotional intelligence perspective, positive psychology. How does this all work in a business? How do you understand yourself? Self-awareness, this, that, and the other. But is the, the one common thread that people are struggling with is connection, connection yes. to self and connection to others. And music has always been, for me, a, a powerful tool to be able to, if you can't say it in words, Amen. say it in music. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't so know what powerful. to say to you right now, but here is a song. Oh, my goodness. Yes. It's going to make you feel better yep. or it's going to help you under, feel understood. And, yep. you know, we, we create this environment in the workplace where, you know, you have to be this when you're outside of work. You, mean you have to be this when you come into work. And we're trying to empower the leaders in our community to just be themselves and to understand what their strengths are and work within those strengths and, you know, utilize the power of other ways of connection to be able to communicate what the intent is they want to create as a leader. But you come to these events, and I remember going to a few sustainability events because obviously there's a big focus on sustainable leadership at Bambuda Group there wasn't even any music on in the background and everybody just seemed a bit awkward and uncomfortable and you know it was there was a lot of introverts in the room which was awesome um but then there wasn't a lot of atmosphere or of things that were actually enabling people to connect properly right and I'm not just talking about alcohol obviously that is a, a big connector for a go-to for some people but then a lot of people don't want alcohol anymore to adjust their mood and they're working on themselves in that way but music every time you know you can set a scene you can create a vibe you can get a message across and and it's something that's transgenerational you know it, it goes to all generations yeah. and um it creates joy and it creates genuine emotion um that enables leaders to connect and yeah so that whole piece, you know, around music is something that we've carried into Bambuda Group from my background, but also the positive psychology of some of the places I've worked previously, like Camp Quality, which was a children's cancer charity, and, you know, their brand used to be about the, the sick child, and then they moved into, oh, well, we're going to have better outcomes if, we, if we're creating a positivity brand because more people are likely to engage with this. And, you know, laughter, the best is the best medicine became the thing and the strength profiling and um, looking at life through that, that slightly different lens and working on yourself and your well-being from that perspective. Yep. Not that there isn't a place for knowing when you're, you're having your highs and your lows and your ups and your downs. And it, it goes about the kindness to yourself on that journey. Um, so, so, yes, I, I think that. My life has definitely been influenced by a hell of a lot of people. Um, yeah. And again, it's those moments where, you know, when you're feeling in despair, when you're feeling down, when you're feeling burnt out as a leader, 
if you have an if you have an interaction with somebody who's going to exacerbate that even further, you know, you're going to almost create um, what's the word a permission for for you to continue in that sense and not really strive to look for other ways to be. Totally. And it is about that. Who are you? Who are you being? Who are you going to be? Um, and you know, our biggest invite really is to to challenge yourself to be better, not just for yourself, but for the people around you. Mm-hmm. And at the same token, be brilliant business people. Yeah. Which before historically doesn't go hand in hand. No, you know, it's, they're it's, separated, aren't they? And when you do launch and start your business, you know, finding, I guess, your tribe, if you want to use that word, or finding your group of people that are going to support what it is that you do. I remember when I first launched, a lot of people that were surrounded in my network at the time had different goals and had different visions as to why they were running and, and, you know, launching their own businesses. And I was never on the same page. And they would almost giggle at me like it was this giggle that happened almost in silence. But when I would say to them, oh, I'm not basing um, what I'm doing around, you know, the dollar sign and I'm not projecting things or planning for things, you know, based on a specific dollar sign. I want to do it based on needs. I want to do it based on where I feel people need that help and support. And there was, yeah, this, this, um, you know, almost like giggle, like, oh, she's, she's, you know, batshit crazy because that's not going to be a sustainable business model in not looking at it just from an income or, you know, monetary perspective. And so I think something that was quite refreshing when I first came to the first event was there are people here who are speaking my language, that they're doing what they're doing with purpose. It's not just about that end goal of being the next, you know, gazillionaire and, you know, buying the next private jet and all of that stuff just does not mean anything to me. It's it's not the way in which I personally want to grow or run, you know, my business or even from a personal perspective. And so that was a really refreshing thing that I saw from all the other networking groups as well that I was going to, whether that was locally in Wollongong or in Sydney was it was a little bit too, yeah, shirt, tie, suit, have to be a certain way, you have to speak a certain way, you can't really be doors. And Bambuda Group really lets you just be doors, you know, if you, yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that's a really good point, doors, because, you know, there's no middle ground. There's not, there's not a lot of places where you can find a middle ground because, look, you know, to be purpose driven is what is brilliant and actually, you know, the most important thing for your long term well being for the benefit of the planet and the world. But to be purpose driven in business is, is actually quite challenging because people see things quite polarized. It's it's you either make loads of money and you're not particularly very kind or you um you know, you don't make any money and you're really purpose driven. So I think the challenge is encouraging those people to find a middle ground um, and the middle ground is absolutely obtainable. There's nothing wrong with being really wealthy. No, Especially not if at you've all. got there in a good way. Yeah. Hell, yes, we want those people who give back a lot, who continue and, yes. and make successful businesses. I think it's just the challenge is that there's such a black and white mentality around, yes. you, you know, what, what is and isn't acceptable. You look at charities and more and more charities are, are, are working to become more sustainable with the way that they plan and the way that they they invest and then oh well we've given you the money you need to spend it because you're a charity case and you know we don't want you to actually become strategic and not depend on us we need you to depend on us yeah. like that because that's the system yes the way we've been taught this system is the way that the world works right but it's not it's not the way the world is working the world does not work you know and we can see okay capitalism has worked yes 100% the, the minority at the top have made lots of money. Well done, everybody. That's a system that works for a small amount of people. But as we're evolving and as we're growing and the next generations are coming forward, they're like, well, why? Why why should only those people have all of the, the share of the wealth in the world and everybody else constantly be stuck on this hamster wheel that they can never get off? Yeah. You know, so also what is the value of money these days? If you're thinking about what 
what success looks like is success actually helping a billion people instead of help you know having a billion dollars um and does success come as a byproduct of helping a billion dollars billion billion people yes. and that's my question to you is you know whatever we've got all you know we've got people that we would consider them all woo woo or other people would say woo woo yep. you know that are more fully engaged <laughs> yep. um and we've got the people that um uh you know are probably kept, um more focused on um yeah. Yeah, as you said, strategic and looking at ways in which their purpose still gives them the opportunity to make good income and be sustainable in that way. So it's having the balance, isn't it, of, of both. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But not just also, one angle, you know? Yeah, yeah. and the and the, the, the peers in those scenarios showing each other their, their reality. So, you know, you, in a community of peer to peer leaders, which is what we do, first and foremost, the Bambuda group is groups of leaders that meet, you know, is if you've got people within your group that are experts across all such different areas in a business, but then they've got such different perspectives on how they look after themselves and their own well being and, you know, their spiritual beliefs and those kinds of things. And, um, you know, when we talk about spirituality and leadership, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, there's no place for that in the corporate world. We do, that, it's about outputs, about productivity. It's about staff retention. You know, actually, that's probably as we were, as we're going to get. Let's talk about retention of staff and what do we need to do <laughs> to get there? What yeah. do we need to do to get there? Yeah. Um, but the reality of it is there's a direct link between uh, people's well-being, sense of self, sense of connection to self to the community and also the business that they work for or they run. If there's no sense of connection to that business, how would you expect somebody to want to perform at their best? Exactly. To be loyal, to care about the community that you're supporting or your customers. So um, we try, what we try to do is, is create a safe environment for people to be just themselves and to take from it what they need. Yeah. So, you know, that community supports each other so that you as leaders can get the tools and resources you need to, to actually really go off and make it your own in your own way without it freaking anybody out, without it being too intense for anybody. Um, and also, you know, it's all about that positive mindset and the, and the joy that we can share together and the connection that we can all bring to each other as, as a group. So that's the beauty of it, really. And we, you know, the feet are firmly on the ground as much as, you know, we're called Bambuda and Buddha sounds quite spiritual. Bam is about the working hard. Buddha is about the working kind. And it's really about finding that balance and that beautiful combination and um, trying to sustain that, which is yeah. about the sustainability piece. And it's yeah. without putting, having to put people in a box, as you said. So they can come, they can be, they can take what they need, but they don't necessarily need to fit in either of those boxes you know it's okay to work with purpose and that's the way that I think I think that when you do something with the right intention and purpose then the income side of it naturally comes it's not something that you're forcing it's not something that you're trying so hard to make happen because your focus is removed from that end goal to well what's my point what's my purpose why why the hell am I doing what I'm doing am I doing it just you know to to make that dollar or am I actually doing it because it's making an impact it's making a change I know what I do helps other businesses and when you help other businesses that doesn't just help that business that helps that person it helps Mm. their family and then it's that domino effect so and all the other stuff yeah just naturally then you're opening the door up for that because you're saying this is you know what I want to do this is the reason why I want to do it and so yeah I've always focused on that more so than the other bits because the other bits just organically come through and happen. I think when you're in that spot of desperation and you're really, really chasing sales and that kind of stuff, it's the worst feeling and it's the worst place to be and you're usually not working then with people that are aligned with you or your purpose and intention. Yeah, and that's that's something that I definitely, if anyone's listening today and that they're in business and they get that feeling of discomfort in their stomach when they're engaging with a partner or a client or a customer that something doesn't feel right. It's not right. The fit's not right. Um, it's hard when you're in those early years 
to make the decisions around that fit because you kind of like, you know, people sell the grandma to be able to put money on the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's the value, the value element of making sure you've got your values aligned all the time is harder for people. Cause it is hard. Like, uh, well, actually, maybe you wouldn't quite 100% be value, 100% value aligned, but, you know, we can make some compromise. And in the end, you, you know, as you evolve, you, you know, and you do have a more established brand, you can have clearer decisions around who you Being do and don't work with. Yeah. Because you really do become, and you are reflected by the people that are around you. So if you've got people who are operating ethically within your community, if you've got, um, People who, you know, don't make you feel good about yourself when you're around them. It, that could just be they're not doing anything in particular. They could even it could be completely unaware of that. But you've got to surround yourself with people that are not going to doubt you, that are not going to give you a hard time, that are going to positively challenge you to encourage you to be the best version of yourself. And that at the end of the day, it, the business isn't the priority you are. Yes. We forget that sometimes, though. Yeah, don't you think? yeah, yeah. And if they lose, if if the business doesn't work, that's fine. But actually, you know, the priority is the humanity in the situation. If you look at COVID now, and the yep. companies trying to survive, there's there's companies that are doing it really, really well, and they're trying their best to be compassionate with clients and customers. And then there's those that are saying they are, but then you know they're debt collecting people at the back end, and you know making people feel totally stressed out and upset and you know, the, but then their national campaigns and everything they put on the TV is, we are here for you. You know, we're supporting you, but are they? Are they really? And I think when you look at businesses internally and externally, having those values really clearly aligned and, you know, making sure the people that are representing you as well um, are, are, are your tribe, like you said, Dog, you know. Yep. um is really important as well because people can smell a toxic culture 150 oh, miles yeah. off. <laughs> and they can smell bullshit a mile off as well. Mainly because the staff are telling everyone they've been doing to how horrible they like it. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Yeah. these are all things to consider. And if you're putting it into black and white, and if we've got some analytical people listening today, look at the balance sheet. If we want to talk about risk ratios, if we want to talk about risk registers, the biggest risk you've got is people within your organization turning into internal terrorists because you haven't been treating them properly. Absolutely. And they that will ruin your business before yep. you can before you can, you know, before you can say our purpose statement is. is. <laughs> you know? So um so so really and I think the, the, the thing here is about keeping things simple. Yep. If we talk about systemic change and we talk about the importance of this systemic change, um, you know, it makes people feel a little bit overwhelmed. But if we just talk about kindness in its simplest form, am I coming from an I or am I coming from a we? Yep. And with your business, am I thinking about my stakeholders in this decision and the impact that will have or am I not? And, you know, you can apply that in every everything that you do. Um, but tell you what, you know, the proof is out there, the research is out there, the statistics is out there, and we're going to continue to keep proving this, dog. You know, yeah. if you do not treat your people properly, if you do not treat your customers properly, if you do not treat your supply chain and the world properly, within the next 10 to 20 years, you will be absolutely irrelevant as a company. Yep. Yeah. Because Agreed. people won't buy from you. Legally, they won't even be able to work with you. And no. um, you've got a choice now. You've got a choice. And we can't expect everybody to have everything tidied up and nice and neat by tomorrow morning. But tomorrow morning is a good time to start, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Absolutely. Now, with your events, and there's also some boosts that are happening at the moment. Yeah. Um, but is there anything specifically? Because this podcast is also about talking about business and also talking about visibility and how we've been able to really put our brand out there. Because mm. if people don't know about us, if we don't put ourselves out there, then it's pretty hard for them to connect to work and do all those things with us. So what do you think has been the most effective way to build Bambooda Group um, and to really get that visibility out there in, you know, in the community? Partnerships. Love it. 150%. Who, who can you partner with 
that's going to add credibility to your brand, that's going to add value to your your community, your business community. Um, and, you know, if there's, a, if, if there's a social impact element to that as well, it's even juicier. Yes. So, so Bambuda Group is actually actually quite a small team in-house, but our extended network is, is very, very big as a yes. result of the fact that our whole model is based on partnerships. So it's our partners that put a lot of the content together for our members. Our members are also partners, and our partners' partners want to get involved in the things that we do. Yep. Um, and with regards to your brand, understanding what you actually stand for as a brand. You know, for us, it's equality and sustainability. And a lot of people challenge us on that. And they're like, well, that's two different things. And I'm like, oh, well, is it? <laughs> is it two different things when if we actually, um, you know, one of the top ways of reducing environmental CO2 emissions is by educating women girls. Is it different things? So, yeah. you know, knowing what you stand for and being able to clearly communicate that. And we've had to learn on that journey as well. Like, there's a lot of people in the past couple of years who are like, oh, I love Bambuda, but what do they do? Um, events. Great events. <laughs> make everyone feel good and there's great something music. to do with charities. <laughs> are they a charity? So, you know, we've yeah. had to, yeah, great music. I love that, I love that, you know, Whitney song we had on. Um, no, it's, so we've all got to get there. And I, and I suppose the, the best way of doing that is constantly communicating and asking people for feedback. What does it, can you understand what we do? You know, we've, we've gone from a consulting model previously into a, into an association model for leaders because we thought that was the best way we could have value and work to our strengths. So, you know, partnerships. 150% and that anytime you're putting content out just don't put wishy-washy waffly talky talky content out give people something give them some value make them want to tune into you um nobody wants to be sold to no nobody nobody and that consistency as well I think is important and making sure that you're showing up so that you are top of mind. So if people are like, oh, Bambuda Group, what's Bambuda Group? I know for myself, you know, being a member and being a delivery partner, um, I've got, you know, the Bambuda Group stamp on my website, on my emails and even something like that can really help to boost your visibility because it opens up the conversation. It opens up the discussion about, well, what is Bambuda Group? You know, what, mm. what is your involvement with Bambuda Group? What is it that they do? What is it, what is it that you do? Um, and that's when you can start to really share, as you said, you know, as part of that partnership network, aligning with the right businesses and the right people to make sure that your message is also then being spread and shared um, and I think the cuddles is a really great way of I guess expressing and explaining how that can evolve but it was done as well with an intention and a purpose again coming back to this mm. um, and just I guess if you want to kind of mention a little bit about that and the you know mindset around creating those groups yeah um, and I think just going back um, to the the partnerships thing one of the things you mentioned there was with that value add I think uh, uh, for things to be sustainable things need to be two-way and yes if you think about charity in the way charities are set up it's like people give to charities and but that's not sustainable they can never get on their own two feet if they're constantly relying on people giving to them um so when you're building those relationships about looking at the mutuality of of what is how do we build a mutually uh, beneficial growth partnership how do yep. we build something that is about us both succeeding rather than you give us this we'll give you a bit of that like what's the incentive to stick around probably none you know and and mutuality is actually one of our key values we actually don't work with or partner with anyone if we don't have a mutual benefit uh, because we want to we want to be there for the long haul um we don't want to be a flash in the pan relationship with anybody um yep. so you know, with regards to the cuddles, that's an example of the long haul is we know that over the period of COVID, we had two major responses as a result of what people needed and wanted in the network. So uh, I called everybody on multiple occasions in the community and said, how are you doing? What do you need? What is going to help you as a leader in your business right now? Bear in mind that there's two camps. One camp is about how can I survive working from home? The other camp is how am I going to keep my home? You know, and, and 
you know, both of those people having very different challenges. Yeah. So, you know, the two things that people came back with was we need, we want the advice and information in a short and snappy way, which isn't going to be too intense and feel overwhelmed and we can pick and choose. So that's why we did the boost. Yep. And also, um, everybody's struggling with the mental health because of the lack of connection. The fact that change isn't easy for us as human beings. We really struggle with change. It's, yep. uh, it's unfortunately one of the flaws of the human condition is we change is inevitable except we still struggle with it it's we crazy do. isn't it <laughs> um so, so we've got this massive period of change now where people are fluctuating between all kinds of feelings as a result of that and you know feeling quite isolated um so those cuddle groups are a response to that well if we can create a, an option for people to be able to tune in every friday just for a quick cuddle aka huddle so there's a little bit of business to it around how are you doing but also how is your business doing how can we all support and give each other advice now those leadership groups and cuddle groups have up to eight people in the idea is that by the power of eight for anything that people need you've got eight other people thinking about how to find solutions how to give uh, advice and also eight other people that care yeah and I think that genuine human interaction and having that community of people to know that there's somebody that's got your back. So we also did buddies as well. So in addition to the cuddles, we buddied people up. And one of the feedback we got actually that people loved having a buddy, it, like more than we expected, but because it was theirs, it was all theirs. No yeah. one could take the buddy, it was their, <laughs> their buddy. And um, <sighs> but they had, you know, some people obviously invested in their buddies more than others, but the commitment was to reach out three times a week to your buddy whether it was entertainment, do something, inspiration. We know some of them were meeting online, having some wines and good times. They've made yep. friendships for life. So, you know, just having that person that they can commit to, but also that time that they can have for themselves. It's something for themselves, um, which we, we saw a trend in the people that were working really hard. Some people were, were not off work. They were working from home in big tech companies and absolutely slogging the guts out, working hard all day. But, they still needed that connection and that treat that wasn't about the, the necessarily in that moment about the intensity of the work and the output. So that was the purpose and that was the intention of the cuddles. There was no other purpose to the cuddles than no. that. <laughs> the byproduct for Bambuda Group, though, was, well, okay, how can we create a virtual offering in the future which enables people who don't have access to these leadership groups in cities, in rural communities, in diverse communities, to have these. So now we're behind the scenes, you know, um, myself and our programs director, Marianne Power, putting together solutions that are going to enable more access and more inclusion as a result of essentially testing Thing, yeah you know, and the, they the did model. work so well and as we've mm. seen I know you've shared a fair bit on LinkedIn as well but just the feedback you know there's been yeah close to 50 you know different like responses just on there alone in a couple of days um, about how much we all needed them and mm. we've now been able to develop stronger connections and bonds with other people within the Bambuda you know group and network um, but as you said it's just having those, you know, people there when, yes, we're balancing business, but we're also balancing life. And mm -hmm. it's just nice to have that, yeah, that support, particularly going through something like COVID-19. I call it the, the naughty C word um, <laughs> where, yeah, it was just kind of, you know, thrown upon us. Um, we weren't prepared for it. But, you know, this shit can happen at any time, I think. And that's what it opened our eyes to. Like we cannot plan for absolutely everything. And we do. Yeah. God knows what's coming next. God knows. You, you know, but we are going to be ready for it. And, that's, and it. That's, that's the point. It's like, what? Well, who we've had a crazy year here in Australia. It's been the bushfires. It's been COVID. We've obviously got massive racial challenges going on now, and the lid is falling off um, with that. Yeah. And we, we, we've all got a role to play with how we, how we're going to be able to support different communities moving forward. Um, and it's that inclusion discussion again. And you know, it's it's an issue that unfortunately, you know, there's. There's a lot going on and there's a lot of nervousness and anxiety in the world at the moment. So what we need more than anything is compassionate, kind, well thought out leaders that even if they're feeling a bit, a little bit knees are knocking themselves and they're wobbly, yes. they're still showing up for themselves and for others. And 
you know, the, the end goal for Bambuda Group, really, because we're a social enterprise, we're here to do nothing but empower these leaders, is, is about creating a community where those leaders can come, they can be safe, they can talk about what's going on, they can find solutions for their business. Because I think a lot of the time when you're in executive positions, business owners, operators, it's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. You don't know who to go to. You don't know who to trust. True. You might have a board you're reporting into and a staff team that want you to lead with integrity and passion and positivity. Um, so having a space that you can come and go, like, how have you actually managed this? Um, so our groups are continuing to scale, and that's our model over the next few years, is we're building groups in all communities, Australia and wider afield, both for entrepreneurs and small businesses and for corporate leaders as well. So. All the things that you do, your energy, connection, you know, awesomeness um, just radiates in, in everything that you touch. And I'm just, yeah, really looking forward to continuing on this. And I know the value that it's brought in both, as I said, business and in life um, and you know, lots of other opportunities and things have come as a result of that one, you know, event. So super excited to see, yeah, cast on my website so you can reach out and get in touch in that way. Anna's also on LinkedIn um, under Anna Shepherd, so please feel free to also um, have a look on there and, and reach out and get in contact. Um, but again, just thank you so much for making time today, spending it with me, spending it with the audience, and I'm just looking forward to, yes, the, the near future and the future future ahead um, for Bambuda and, and being part of that as well. Thanks, Lars. I've been really happy to be here today. So, um, yeah, I'm completely accessible. Get me on LinkedIn. I'm always up for a cup of tea and a chat. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anna. Talk to you Take soon. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks so much for listening today and making time to tune in. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please leave a review and some feedback. If you'd like to learn more about me or my services, you can find me at doreenbrown.com.au with links to social profiles so you can connect with me on there as well. Well, that's it from me today. So see you next time for the next instalment of Let's Get Visible. Mm-hmm.